Season 3 is out, and with it, we've got a ton of changes. Possibly OP mythic items, unvaulted treasures from the past, plenty of new mobility, and oh yeah, sharks as a vehicle. It's bonanza of change, and with it, the way we play has changed as well. What's up guys, it's your host, your friend Dan, and today let's talk Season 3 and some advanced tips to help you counter the meta and win more matches. This new season has a wide array of new changes and the meta has shifted drastically. So there are a ton of new things you guys need to know and in this video we're going to cover all of it. Before we get into it though, drop a comment right now telling me your most favorite and least favorite changes of Season 3. And of course, if you need a guiding hand for the new season, our pro coaches over at ProGuys.com can help you out. Plus, we got plenty of new courses, info on the new season coming out, and so much more. So check out the link in the description and get started on your path to improvement. Alright, let's jump right in. So the first tip we got is to learn and use as much of the new mobility as possible. As you might know, mobility is crucial, not only for making quick or early rotations across the map, but also for making sure you survive in the end game. And on that front, this season just added a ton of new options for us. First, we got sharks. If you cast your fishing rod near any shark, it'll bite and then you can ride it around. This leaves you extremely susceptible to any nearby players with decent aim. The plus side is that you might be able to use the shark as a weapon if you boost it right toward an enemy, but honestly, I feel like we're probably not going to see that come into play very often. No doubt, these sharks are super fun, but based on our first glance, a boat is probably going to be a more convenient rotation method. But step aside sharks, because when it comes to mobility, these whirlpools are taking us to new heights. Located all around the flooded areas of the map, just step inside any whirlpool to launch into the air, allowing you to glide to your destination. I don't think we've seen map mobility this good since chapter 1, so my advice is to plan your rotations and loot paths with these whirlpools in mind. They're just that useful, and if you do, you won't be getting caught out on the edges engaging in storm fights as often. Plus, I mean, hey, beats swimming, that's for sure. Also added to competitive modes are the Season 2 Choppers. We're all used to these by now, so they're pretty self-explanatory. Just make sure you're careful not to fly too high over land with them, especially in solos, because aggressive players will be shooting you down any chance they get. But now, I want to talk about mobility we can carry. The most significant of that type is the new Mythic Grappler. Just like the Season X Grapnel Gun, you can use it to pull yourself toward incredibly long distances, up to about 75 meters. The only downside is that you'll have to glide a bit before you can land, so you need to be very careful using it around enemies. But as for its viability, this thing is going to be insane during endgames. Getting into new zones first is so vital for closing out a competitive match, and this thing can do it for you repeatedly no problem. If you haven't checked out the agency, I'm sorry, the authority, make sure you do, because if you can snatch this grappler, you've got your mobility on lock. Speaking of mythic mobility, if you land a caddy corner and eliminate the robotic feline kit, his shockwave launcher becomes yours. I'm sure you all remember how useful shockwave grenades are for endgame rotations. Well, this launcher version is no exception. It uses rocket ammo, which means you can hold up to 18 shockwaves and even refill it later on. Not to mention, if you launch yourself into builds with it, you can destroy them too. So it's not only an item for rotating, but also a top-notch disruptor capable of helping you finish kills. But in what was a complete surprise to us, crash pads can now be looted in competitive modes. We're probably all used to how this item works by now, but as for how useful it'll be in the end game, well, I think this is going to be legit. You can carry six, so I mean, that's like a whole lot of mobility for endgame circles. The only thing you might have to worry about is bonking your head on other players' tunnels, so if you play in scrims or stacked lobbies, make sure you spot out a clear path before using them. There's actually one more new mobility item, something kind of hidden away that I haven't seen anyone discuss yet, but we'll get to that later on in the video. So with all this talk about how powerful the new mythic items are, you guys are probably all tempted to land at the new vault locations, Caddy Corner, the Fortilla, and the Authority. But with such a hefty reward comes considerable risk. These spots are going to be contested pretty much every game, so just like with last season, it's a risk-reward type situation you have to weigh. Don't fall into the trap of thinking you need to land in these spots or anything, because more often than not, you're probably better off dropping somewhere more low-key. But what seems to be yielding a more consistent reward so far are these new supply drop locations. There appears to be at least a couple throughout the map, the first one being at Rickety Rig, inside the ruins of Season 2 Rig's old vault. This drop spot is perfect because not only does it guarantee a supply drop weapon, but you also get a launch pad, and that's just crazy considering you can land right on it at the start of the match. 
Another spot that most of us haven't discovered is the pontoon. This boat roams around the edges of the map, mostly in the corners it seems, and in every match it'll be in one of several different spots. But if you look out for a small wooden boat when you're dropping, it's not hard to notice. Land there and there's a supply drop. A few chests, slurp kegs, and enough fruit to fill up your local supermarket. Overall, this spot is entirely busted when it comes to getting kitted. Did you find any other supply drop locations like this one? Come on, don't keep it a secret. Tell us in the comments if you did. But moving on, let's discuss one of the most significant changes in Season 3. Across the board, there's been a headshot multiplier reduction on nearly every gun. That means our headshots do less damage now. Rifles deal a lot less, shotguns too, and even the SMG doesn't headshot for as much as before. That's pretty unfortunate, so the question we've been getting a ton is, should I still go for headshots? Well, at close or medium distances, I'd say yes, definitely. But at long range, like 30 or 40 meters plus, I want to say you might actually be better off going for body shots with your assault rifle. As long as you can land two hits, you'll do more damage than one headshot, which definitely feels like an easier task. I don't know, what do you guys think? Speaking of headshots, we heard aim assist got nerfed quite a bit and many other huge changes to the meta. So if you want to get up to speed fast, ProGuides.com is the place to go. Check it out. But headshots aside, let's talk about an item change. The pump got tossed back into the vault. <laughs> Moment of silence. All right, that's enough. And the charged shotgun has taken its place. The charge shotgun holds three shots, and you can either fire it quickly by tapping or charge up your shot by holding down the trigger. It takes about a second to get to full charge, but doing so dramatically increases damage dealt. A blue charge shoddy at full power does exactly 200 to the head, so that's the type of output you can expect. However, and big however, the downside is the fact that you have to spend a bit of time charging up your shot. This means that when faced directly against attack shoddy or even an SMG, you might find yourself in trouble. And because of that, you need to be really careful of peeking while charging a shot. For instance, you won't be able to just edit on an enemy and 200 quick dead them. The charge rate will make sure of that. So how are you supposed to use the charge shoddy? Well, first off, you need to go for more non-charge shots than you think, especially when your opponent has an angle. You can still get those off relatively quickly. All you need to do is make sure you're tapping fire and letting go of the trigger ASAP. But as for fully charging, try to play around angles where you can charge behind cover, then quickly peek and shoot. We were watching Young Calc, and it's like he's already perfected this strategy. Anytime he would charge up, he'd be behind cover, but at the same time, he was ready to peek either with a right hand angle or a jump shot. He would also try to bait out edits every now and then, just another way you can successfully use this shotgun. But other than that, the charge up shoddy currently feels more like a defensive weapon. For instance, you can charge up a shot while someone is stealing your wall, wait for an edit, and blast them in the face. Your opponent will hear the charge, though in that case, at least they're not taking your wall and editing it. Either way, so far we've noticed this weapon lacks a bit on the offensive front and excels in defensive play. Of course, the community is quick at finding new intelligent strategies. I'm sure the coaches of pro guides are learning cool tricks with it as we speak, but for now, I'd say that if you're going to play aggressively, stick with the tack shotgun. If you prefer a more defensive playstyle, then the charge shoddy isn't as lousy as everyone's initial reaction makes it seem. And the fear your opponent gets hearing that charge is so much more impactful than what can be noticed at first glance. Over time, once we all start getting used to it, I honestly think that it'll only become more deadly. Okay, lastly, let's talk about a big change that happened to foraged consumables. All those little mushrooms, apples, and so on can now be picked up and carried in your inventory, up to 15 per stack. You can find them in old spots and new, but also in these green and brown produce boxes scattered around the place. If you need a reminder, apples and bananas restore 5 health, mushroom restore 5 shield, slurp mushrooms give you 10 health or shield, and coconuts give you 5 health or shield. Corn and cabbage are also new, which both restore 10 health. All that being said, you probably don't need to prioritize picking these up since you'll typically have bigger and better healing items available. However, one new forage food you should consider holding on to are peppers. When used, your character gains a huge speed boost for about 20 seconds. While I'd suggest saving these for the end game, I could even see them being useful in fights. Just imagine zipping and zooping around in a build battle, you'd be so hard to hit. So far, we've only seen peppers in produce boxes, but if you find a spot where you can loot them off the map, make sure to let everyone know in the comments. In conclusion, the way you win in Season 3 isn't too different from the last one. It's a lot of the fundamentals still. Rotate early, take fights when they're in your favor, have mobility for endgames, that sort of thing. High risk drop spots and OP mythics are still around, and if you can win your landing, those items will help a ton. But since we're not all early game gods, these are the tips I think can help us the most. 
First, make sure you utilize the new mobility for quicker rotations and faster looting. Whirlpools are also incredibly helpful, but so are choppers. And for the end game, peppers and crash pads are the two new non-mythic mobilities you probably want to start carrying. We've already discovered two spots where you can consistently get a supply drop at the start of every match. One in Rickety Rig and one on the Roaming Pontoon. There may even be more to discover, but abuse these while you can for some easy god tier loot. And as for using the charge shoddy, it's not as bad as everyone thinks. You need to be using quick release shots a ton, pretty much any time your opponent has an angle on you. But if you go for right hand peaks or jump shots, you can usually charge it up no problem. That distinction there seems to be the secret to turning the charge shotgun into a beast. Alright guys, thanks so much for watching the video. Make sure to give it a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel for more. We've got a ton of exciting Season 3 content coming, so don't miss out. I'll see you guys in the next video.